uh, Facebook gave, gave us an opportunity to uh, build the first CR experience for India, and that's where we built the experience of Fukre. Fukre returns in 2018 when Sanju released. That was, I think, a big. Uh, moment for us. Uh, that that AR experience totally changed, uh, brought us in the forefront that hey, AR is something that everybody should pay attention. After you have many film stars and you know, <laughs> film studios, ke saath kaam ki hai. how the experience went? People say that you know, film stars are a little bit tough to work with. So, how is it going to be in the first time that you work with and over the years? I think you work with a lot of big things on there. It's a high pressure situation for sure. It's not all famous. One of the experience that is very dear to me and I think that has helped me a lot is you know, working with Red Shoes. The reality of especially like Indian customers overall is uh, last moment time. Um, we are in the industry, mein, but we still get a call a week prior or two weeks prior to having a sale team in the next time. It's, it's, a, it's like one of the riskiest business to be in. The best road is a big deal. Metaverse to us was always that it's a virtual space, it's a game that you can now use for potential commerce opportunities. That's the viewpoint. But people were like, hey, virtual world is not going to do this, but they were playing the game. Rahe so, what is this? Vision, vision, vision. Everybody is talking about AI and AR and VR and MR, but very few people have actually worked on this technology commercially and at scale. Today's podcast is special hai for the sole reason that the founder that we have got today is somebody who is working with the biggest names in the entertainment industry as well as with platforms like Meta and Snapchat and Instagram and TikTok officially to create AR and VR experiences and now also dabbling into the AI space. Meet Snehal Dhruv, who's the co-founder of Superfan Studio. It's a full stack immersive studio which is building in the AR, VR and the MR space. They work very closely with some of the biggest production houses. If you have seen Sanju, if you have seen Fukre, Fukre Returns, all of the AR and VR experiences, especially in the marketing campaigns, were done by Superfan Studio. This podcast is very useful for people who are looking to build in the AR and the VR space to understand the overall ecosystem, how do the economics work, and in general, what is the competition like. Hope you people enjoy this one. A lot of people have this conception of knowledge and a lot of people might say PR is that after this way, most of the Karcha is this super. So, initially, when you were getting into this, and somebody said, Terry, how did you navigate through that part? Was it the first time you have a team with you? How big was it? Was it yeah, like a five member team? Yeah, and was that team capable enough to pull this off? You saw it only as they get, who's actually there? We'll figure it out. Yeah, I think what I figured out early on is hustlers like me are required for you know, building something. Um, nobody in the industry had the right answers. So when you are so new, the technology is relatively like newer as well, then the only way you can maximize people who have the ability to learn. Yeah. So even uh, let's say like the very first uh, colleague that I had on board since 2015, he recently like moved from the organization, uh, but he's been like the longest, right? Since we started in he was basically like a customer support on a non-technical role. Eventually, he was my guy who was leading the entire tech team, right? So that was his hustle. Through that, hey, throw me the challenges, I'll you know get things executed. Uh, and I think that was one key thing uh, during initial years that you need from support. Right? So, Ali, the how much when when this when this uh, when this problem statement or rather this opportunity came your way? You people didn't have that much knowledge. Can you guess it? Can I get How How did you figure it out? Did you because I think when you went to people who could make it and might get it done, what was that process like? Uh, so, one of the challenge in any early technology adoption is like finding resources. Yeah, right. Resources existed that could do work, but even they didn't know, ke, you know, you can get So, for simple example, uh, like we went to Arena to kind of hire because one of the skills that's required is either we need animators and 3D modelers. Arena Animation. Yeah, Arena Animation. So mm -hmm. we've hired lots of folks from there over the years, but we have to reskill them to yeah. the adoption. 
बट एनी बडी थ्री मॉडलिंग बोलेंगे कि अच्छा मैं रियल इस्टेट में इज वेयर यू नो दैट्स वी डी आई वुड क्रिएट रियल इस्टेट प्रॉपर्टी और लाइक ऑटो कार्डेड एट ऑल दैट सो दैट्स वेयर दे आर लिमिटेशन और सर इंडिया में आई वुड से इट स्टिल लाइक नाउ गेटिंग इन टू थिंग वी एफ एक्स स्टूडियोज एंड गेमिंग स्टूडियोज दैट हैव कम ओवर द इयर्स इन पास टेन ईयर्स मोर मोर सो ओवर दैट दैट अपॉर्चुनिटी है राइट दैट स्किल कैन बी अडेप्टेड टू दैट uh but for us early on like back in 2017 that was still a challenge where people themselves were not sure ke ye hum kar payenge ke nahi ye ho payega ke nahi so what we used to do is of course read up a lot uh and uh, basically create our own tutorials and own journey and even the platforms are limited but platform also supporting ke like what do you need from us right specification sometimes even the simple specification nahi tha ke file ka size kya hona chahiye eventually were defined over okay, by 2 mb ka size hai for the entire experience which is again limited traditionally mm-hmm. like any other game and all doesn't feel a limitation but because you working within the platform you are limited in terms of what can go on, on an app as well so we learned through and stumbled through okay, how do we get best quality in what are the compression technologies that we can do uh, and again like those technologies evolved over the years as well now there is ai that is supporting through that process uh, that makes the creation simpler for sure Uh, but it still doesn't replace like a person which everybody's expectation is ki are the prompt dalunga and put output aa jayega it's still not that like glorious yes you can get away with some things but yeah early on the challenge was how do you reskill these people who knew that es skill is very apply hota hai to say ki nahi there be also that so there was lots of education on both side whether it was customer ki how do you use this right and everybody's thing was acha naya technology chalo headlines ke liye focus karte to kya naya headline ho sakta hai तो ऑफ़ कोर्स फुकरे के लिए था कि इट वाज़ द फर्स्ट ईयर फिटर इन बॉलो देन इट वाज़ वी डिड फॉर देयर वाज़ परी मूवी सो इट वाज़ द फर्स्ट हॉरर मूवी फिटर राइट लाइक इट्स जस्ट प्लेइंग विद कीवर्ड्स टू काइंड ऑफ राइट द फर्स्ट स्टोरी एंड देन लाइक संजू असेंशियली बिकेम दैट है द फर्स्ट राइट वे ऑफ यूजिंग एन एआर एक्सपीरियंस टू काइंड ऑफ ड्राइव मूवी मार्केटिंग एंड प्रमोशंस सो द स्टोरी कीप्स ऑन वर्किंग बट इट्स एजुकेशन एज अ सेट ऑफ द कस्टमर साइड एंड एज अ रिसोर्स साइड एज वेल that we had to reskill lot of these uh, resources early on to make them understand that what they are doing can also be used in this and this is how we can use to ye ye aap log primarily movie and entertainment but there is the core audience support giant base view then you also work for the client view so but nahi hum log we are primarily focused on so we started in movie at same right? and i think uh, soon we would have I think in the tenor of two years, we worked with almost ninety-five percent of small, big studios, media networks out there, uh, and because of a partnership with uh, like Meta as well, that accelerated. Uh, and then when we got on the global stage uh, at the F8 conference, where we referred as the underdog, in Asia, in India, a creative studio is which is doing like tremendous, you know, good work. And I think that was the recognition that we were going for that our competition is not local; it's global. uh like you know good design good artwork can come from you but we do support some of the best games or best of the content but that story never comes out right those studios are sitting around you but you will never know that the yeah, asa international content nikla so i think that stage kind of uh you know brought us to the main fold and uh we then entertainment was was dominant till i would say like 20 end of 2018 2019 uh, but then sports right so it's all like fan engagement became like a domain that we kind of grew into whether it was for media entertainment or whether it's for sports uh we kind of ventured into the sports side as well we worked with lots of ipl teams we worked with the cricket associations uh we figured out things that can be done for kabaddi in an ar experience to like hockey and different sports as well and our thing was always like pushing boundaries that everybody thinks ke hai popular hai and what we think is ke unpopular to unsexy ko sexy kaise kar sakte hai right that's the play that has worked for us and then eventually covid accelerated the thing that you know movies stopped in the theaters right sports were not getting played uh brands or products were still getting sold right so then brand uh, started spending a lot they understood the potential as well uh so for us covid kind of changed the game as well that hey brands became like a dominant uh thing for us right now i would say the split is like 30% for media entertainment 20% for sports and 50% is brands and brands across the board so whether it's fmcg whether it's auto whether it's you know any other industry that you can think of we work with brands across the space 
uh, and goal for us that every you know market every vertical has a potential uh, and i think going forward we want to go deeper into certain verticals where we see bigger opportunities interesting well you have job kar rahe ho you definitely in the marketing uh kind of fold right so you will be sitting becoming uh one of the places where these uh where these media houses are spending the marketing dollars to make sure that the past amount will be gotten covered so there is a huge element of what is the objective that you try to solve the month of awareness activity that are put there in the age pack that is any coverage just try to understand he when you people decide a campaign uh can you walk me through he guess how do you people ideate and how does it depends on the task you can take any of any of the examples just for example for a movie uh, you people is this the is the intent to get people to know that hey a movie is coming or is it to uh, make them go and buy tickets how what what's the what's the way sure so i'll take it like a media example and i'll take like a brand example as well uh commonly like the big so whether it's a product launch whether it's a content launch the strategy is awareness and visibility for the product itself and again like content or product product itself uh, and then second is of course driving sales so a life cycle of a movie is six weeks ka timeline right che hafte pehle trailer aayega ya teaser aayega then there is so poster aayega then trailer teaser aayega then there will be like three four content pieces and then there is a week of movie release so essentially through the entire thing a one experience not going to do justice so the way we also try to kind of position and ideate is of uh, what would drive you know much value at each uh, content uh, that we are marketing or the end objective so when our motion poster is coming the goal is always uh, that if there is a look then people want to have that look uh, so the ideas are more set around there when there is trailer released and there is content uh, song music released then there are two things that can be done is how do you gamify how do you bring more people to the fold drive more as a challenge that more people create content using that so we've seen like ar game who do wonders when it is about storytelling it's about elements of the movie and making them go through a scenario it could be just nodding your head left and right and navigating a user or driving a car driving a bike driving a you know fighter jet or being in a fighter jet so whatever that storytelling is how do you bring that storytelling of the content into a experience that uh, people make it uh, it's fun and engaging for them the other on the music side is of course how it could be like a tool because in the end in local objective for anything in between now with influencers and everything as well constantly is how go and more people create as a tool um, content using this whether it's with the product or just you know with the content itself so we kind of planned many of the uh, ar experiences as a tool some jo like lyrical as a thing so typically you would have seen people will do lyrical content which is you are dancing there is lyrics kind of floating around we said that is a property that uh, is great in ar because everybody doesn't have the skill set so then we publish it as a tool with a music background and lyrics coming in a foreground background and all that uh, making it easier as a creation tool so that's where the initial thing becomes now the peak of the movie release essentially everything is tied down that how all these things drive people into the theaters विजिबिलिटी हो गया जितना करना था हो गया टिकट नहीं सेल होगा तो दिस एंटायर एक्सरसाइज गोज टू वेज सो दैट्स वेन इट कम्स के हेर यू प्ले दिस गेम नाउ यू कैन इफ यू स्कोर दिस मच देन यू हेट दिस टॉक्स इज वेल राइट यूज इट एज अ पे टी एम कोवर्ड एज दिस और देन यू डन कैम पेज कैन बी लिंक टू अदर चैट वर्ड सोल्यूशन वेल के आप टैक करो आपको डी एम आएगा एक कोड आएगा दिस इज हाउ यू बैड ऑफ वर्ल्ड बुक टिकट्स सो हाउ डू ब्रिंग टेक्नोलॉजीज टू वर्क टूगेदर इट टू लाइक सीवर स्लो whether it's again on the maybe upside whether it's within the social media platform then we make those solution and implements as well uh, and then that's basically the life cycle if the movie is doing really well so something that we recently worked with gather right uh, gather like a tremendous response lot of fiber at cross in terms of uh, business that they've done uh, they're going to push for second uae similarly i think jawan we can see the same that they're pushing for second uae So at any point in time, then the marketing strategy in week two is how do you get to people to book again or like view the second time? Then basically that experience changes and transforms to that hey you've seen this now there's much more content out there. Uh, how do you make it re-engaging and get the people into the theaters again? 
So that's typically the life cycle of the movie and how this kind of plays a role. Uh, with a product, it's similar. So wherever you are, let's say launching a product, right? Uh, it starts with, hey, can we do unboxing of this product, right? Before it goes in people's hand, uh, before the release date, can we get people to experience this? Whether it's through the back camera holding the product and it unboxes, or it's on your table, or you are doing a try on and then getting a feel of the market, so it of the product. Uh, so that's when the product uh, awareness journey, uh, you know, begins. Where you want uh, storytelling to play a role, you want product features to kind of be explained, the differentiators as well, and highlighting all of that. So that's where. It's almost like a pre-sale cycle. And then it gets to a similar sale cycle where using gamification, other methods, you say, hey, if you score XYZ, uh, or walk into a store, click a picture, and then you know you get something, discounts, or you're the first lot or whatever. You, you have exclusivities, you have loyalties, and everything that kicks in the process. So it's not very different to any other content format. Yeah, it's just the strategy and adoption kind of changes. ये or it's embedded in an Instagram profile or on Snapchat profile where people can access and then one uses it then there is always a button saying hey you can use it as well and that's how kind of it uh, carry forwards uh, into like a campaign and a strategy from there on uh, but uh, typically different formats so there are front camera experiences there are back camera experiences there are experiences which are called portal where the you know it's basically like a pop-up store virtually Right, you hold your phone. There's a door. You walk in that door, and now the environment has changed. Wow. And then you are actually in a store. You can like walk, get closer to things, and you get that simulation of being at a location which really doesn't exist. Uh, so those are like portal experiences. Uh, like try on is of course like super popular, uh, and then that can again be like a front end uh, back. Uh, there are uh, lots of like one of the recent things that we really enjoyed was. Uh, meditation using an AR experience. So we partnered with uh, Meta to create this experience for some of the creators. And one of the creators was Gaurav Gopaldarji. So his strength and power is essentially the vocalization of what he does, right? Or the way he kind of preaches. Uh, so he said, "How do we bring this uh, experience in an AR format? Which, like audio and AR, sometimes it's not like an obvious thing that people think of." Uh, so he said, "Hey, let's take up the challenge and let's see what we can come up with." So the final product of that experience was uh, that you open the filter. The filter will say, "Now hold the record button and close your eyes." The challenge users are saying, "Are you know the bulb who are the how can I experience this?" But they still did it to see what happens, and then they like, of course, peeking, "Hey, what's going on at times?" And the filter will say, "Close your eyes. Uh, don't disturb your meditation." Or there was like Gaurav Gopada saying. Please keep your eyes closed to have a final experience journey, right? So people kept it for 30 seconds, 45 seconds, to even like a minute. I right? kept on recording till that audio feedback was there to tell them now think about this or you know calm yourself and all that. The final product, even the user had not seen while creating, and that was something really unwilling to us as well. Okay, you know, dude, that is like such a uh, I don't know, like not an accidental. I would say it was intentional. But still, like an accidental discovery that hey, you know there is potential in everything. You just have to kind of change the viewpoint. Uh, and uh, like everyone who was excited, ki ha, I went through meditation with the closed eyes, and I captured the experience as well. That sometimes I can't do it, right? So then that unlocked that fold. So again, the adoption keeps on changing, the viewpoints keep on changing. But how do you bring this new technology, new adoption? Is what kind of you know. Yes, it's all. So, yeah. For us, the big point will be the yeah, ROI. Yeah. In general, how how expensive is uh, you know getting this as one of your cost carrier, the marketing carriers that you have in the media field, and what is the kind of ROI that the people have seen, you know, visually any kind of other studies which happen? Yeah. So we as a company being in the space in the immersive space, I would say since 2017. 
so give or take around six to seven years six years i would say uh so far we've done close to uh any of the work that we've done we would have worked with more than 250 customers through our life cycle uh we would have built more than 1500 experiences and collectively i would say that has garnered close to 65 billion views across platforms so uh when it comes to impact and one of course a very outlier which we don't even count it what we've done so far uh was like a tiktok experience right uh so let's define like roi right from spend to the impact itself uh typically i would say in the early days we've done work for like 50 key and one lakh as well uh but you know it was still early days but once you kind of realize you're specialized uh there is value that you provide and it's not just ki if filter aapne jo idea socha wo bana ke de denge but how do you make it better how do you stay through the ideation to delivery to the creation journey that would be like seeding and amplifying as well so typically any of our ar experiences start at like one and a half lakhs or above for a domestic market for internationally it's 2500 to 3000 dollars that there it begins for uh we've seen experiences sometimes as basic as like a randomizer filter which is like something on your head and you left uh, you nod left or right and you give your responses to phenomenally well uh, and it can go like an on average those randomizers have done i would say 10 to 15 million views yeah, yeah, yeah. so if you consider from a cpc standpoint or your typical like you know marketing uh, view points uh, it is extremely cheap work to a typically like ad spend that you do so uh from that it has an exponential value you just have to plant it right it's not about ki maine banaya and you know now you know cross fingers and everything will work right you have to educate your customer you have to tell them as well what are the different ways or you have to bring in the creators to better do so it's not just the creation fee but you know putting some right order value to it in terms of marketing is also very important typically say what's your creation budget you should have a minimum uh, marketing budget for that as well Whether you bring in micro influencers, macro influencers, you bring in now there are AR ad formats as well that will drive, but that uh, typically yields greater results when you are uh, selling a product and a better defined ROI as well. Uh, the effectiveness of an AR ad in that case is way cheaper to a traditional ad because only few people are doing it, and let's say platforms are giving preference to these newer formats. So if you're not tapping in today, then it's just another thing uh, tomorrow. so uh that's where typically uh, like a thing would be uh, as i said like a two and a half three lakh spend can get you 40 million views to 50 million views as well and that is some once it travels right once it seeded right then it just travels yeah. so we have like our own snap handle where we don't market anything where we're just experimenting and putting stuff we've got more than billion plays not even like views or impression billion plays of what our content that we created and this is you know just uh, us experimenting out and throwing this content out there for if people to use it as a tool or use it as an inspiration uh but it has of course it works for us from a lead gen perspective as well it brings in the customers it brings in the customers into the fold uh and that's the ROI that we look forward that hey we have to constantly keep on iterating constantly do R&D uh, constantly showcase and you know, show the potential uh and then how it should be seeded right and what industry applications could be and how it can go above and beyond got it there is me because she is which i wanted to understand this so these are platform specific experiences right this is not a one size fits so yeah. you have to make one specific way for a star and very doable story of course right so is me uh black you need to be partnered up with the black form who you need to be a partner for the pro for the black form to be this then when anybody who has the know how to do it how is that work? so early on there were restricted partners that they would on board uh and then they did like the alpha and beta partners mm-hmm. which means that when it start public we get access to those things we are helping shape ke alpha se beta ke se hoga and beta se public ke se hoga so uh long answer short uh anybody can start doing it now uh it's accessible you just go on there are creator pages that you can you know sign up as a, a meta spark creator or there is a lens uh, snapchat uh, lens studio which is the tool to kind of create these and you can go in and do that there are lots of templates out there they have their course and materials certification as well uh now which of course never uh, didn't exist earlier on 
but yeah those those things are there the ecosystem is now matured enough uh, that this information is readily out there if you want to get started if you want to specialize then is the number of years of experience under the belt to create and specializes specialization as well right today we know that it, like a creator can create this for a quarter of a price uh, but can he guarantee performance right can he guarantee impact can he promise certain things as well or will really he show up every time like that becomes a challenge so uh, again the, depending upon what customer you're targeting and all it's it's really your proposition so let's say for us anybody says creator itne mein kar lega like be my guest i know three months later they'll come back arisne and nahi chala and the challenge becomes is uh, explaining them kyu nahi chala mm-hmm. right they think they did everything mm-hmm. but they didn't even hit the basic notes ki you know video aise create kar karoge to platform mein inherent way hai to tag that thing and other people can easily access it uh but those basic hygiene things are not done and then they expect everything right and let's say an individual create account so uh it's like any other like development as well right like people can think are ye app to sasta bana sakte hai ye to nahi ek lakh rupaye rakhe dega and tum 10 lakh maunge but then each has its own value and uh, that's the niche at least that works for us that we are specialized in terms of where we put our hands we also wanted to be a case study and i think patrol like any of the work that we've done has been a case study they uh, like us knows i want what does well and it has been industry for first uh, in many cases we have to i think i think there's a so i also probably you know the next bit which i want to touch upon is when you have seen you have been right from the beginning of the ar vr goes to you have been there then you have seen the industry world work globally and yeah in the work how how is i mean can you just help me understand the evolution of this because i be I think this thing is still to still about to go mainstream. It's still not mainstream yet. Yeah. And I think the the the, the most innovators in Zadatan media, uh, Zadatan marketing innovations, all of these are filled with people systems. So these are the people. And even in this case, I think these people are the ones who are uh, who are getting champion in this uh, this this format. तो मतलब कैसे आप देख रहे हैं हाउ आई सीन दिस इंडस्ट्री वर्क एंड हाउ यू सीन दिस के बी और आ जा रहा है ये किस तरह जा रहा है सो आई वुड से वी वांट एट द फोर फ्रंट वी वर जस्ट एट द कस्ट ऑफ व्हेन इट वाज गोना गो मेन स्ट्रीम व्हेन इट हैड लाइक इट्स आईफोन मोमेंट विद बॉलीवुड हॉलीवुड काइंड ऑफ अडॉप्टिंग ए आर एज अ टेक्नोलॉजी हैज बीन मोर देन आई वुड से 12 13 इयर्स नाउ देयर वर विकिट्यूड लाइब्रेरीज यू फॉर आवर्स एंड ऑल दीस प्लेटफॉर्म्स एग्जिस्टेड the challenge of the distribution and what changed as i mentioned earlier was the access to distribution on these social media platforms uh i would say uh, from a early journey to now right it was essentially considered and even like the first time users and we have like new customers asking the same questions what you should answer like 6 years back mm-hmm. uh that they still think it's a toy mm-hmm. right yeah, yeah. it's it's a it's a fad that got to come in and then you know it's going to go away but it's the old fad it's not now industry fad uh, it's more restricted to the individual's mindset itself that they quickly need to evolve that hey your competitors are doing this mm-hmm. and when you bring referential information that let's say a clothing brand like how they utilizing you know 6 years back to now and how that journey of evolution has been and that changes the viewpoint uh, so in terms of growth uh, early on it was like a toy and fun uh, eventually we've seen the a progression into more like a utility and now we see it as a tool right and once it is a tool uh it becomes embedded in the ecosystem that today if you see uh there are lots of creators who will go on snapchat record a content and post on instagram right so for them it is like a constant tool whether it's about cleaning the face without makeup they don't have like a staff to kind of do their entire setup so they use these filters to look good Mm-hmm. uh with the right yeah. light setup and everything doing it's a simple filter right nothing like crazy goes in there uh and you know these filters get better and better that you feel natural you have ai and all those things pay, uh, playing as well that you know like i could be reading it but my attention is still on a camera right and that is also an ar experience so what it is starting to evolve especially for i think during covid to now is it's a tool and a uh, tool to the people who know how to use it effectively and that effectiveness only becomes when you use it a few times you see the impact 
and then it becomes like a repetitive thing that we know hey okay, search karo and this is what i'll get or this is like the trending how do i use this other trending tool to better create content uh so again the utility changes but i think one of the evolution that we seeing now it's getting into industry more deeper so uh two quick examples one on the real estate side uh that we seeing all the ar content that we create uh now are transforming to ar as well, mr as well so mixed reality for people's references is nothing uh is similar to ar ar you access via mobile phone but mr you access using a headset uh and mr is a much more deeper way to better bring it because you it's a hands free experience rather than you holding a phone right on something but that's the transition that we seeing in the market that this content is now available on different platforms in different formats uh that you can rapidly scale them grow so uh it's now are you talking these new access of technologies in real estate let's say i was saying you can actually move your phone in an empty space and visualize an entire space mm-hmm. with your own stuff by changing colors by tapping in floor uh by doing all that and on a simple phone right and then developers are using this to kind of showcase customers when they're coming on the site empty walls nothing but actually helping them visualize that this is what your home would look like and then transforming those customers to actually make purchase of that uh, asset as well uh education people are using to bring in uh content or access to stuff which you can't physically get access to so a simple thing that i can't have chemical reactions right constantly happening at my home as well and i can bring those apparatus as those solutions home but i can open an ar experience i can hold a bottle match it to something and you know see what the reaction would be last hota ya nahi hota or whatever that end thing is in a harmless way i can learn uh, like yeah, chemistry yeah, in a much yeah. more effective yeah. way uh, rather than saying teacher ne bola hai ki ye cheez idhar dalo and wohi hoga right wo last venture bolega nahi ye aise nahi hoga and that's how he became like a discoverer of sort that he is discovering acha ye karoge to ye nahi hona chahiye and ye hoga or whatever that competition combination is and that's how you explore so that's what uh, ar is used in education to do that exploration that you can't do in a physical space yeah so is going beyond the marketing fact right and it's again subjective to the industry let's say like media entertainment doesn't need uh, education as a format right for them everything is about engagement for sports it's again like engagement but being a fan of the sport as well and all that but still it's a it's an entertainment medium when you look at real estate it's all about like you can actually use it for closing a customer then it's like purely from a business standpoint education again the same thing we've seen in automobiles and you know different applications across so that evolution is now coming and we see more and more campaigns where a an ar experience banane ko raha now we go for media entertainment kind of understood what is the application and how people can use it uh when we go into other verticals it's you know again all they put different formats and new formats and how they can be used as well interesting और मुझे बात हो रहा है आपने बहुत सारे फिल्म स्टार्स और यू नो हर फिल्म स्टूडियोस के साथ काम किया है हाउस एक्सपीरियंस में एंड आई थिंक हर फिल्म स्टूडियो का डीएनए अलग होता है एंड पीपल से दैट यू नो फिल्म स्टार्स आर लुकिंग बिट टफ टू वर्क विद बिकॉज़ दे आर फिक्स्ड इन व्हाट दे वांट ये चीज है ये चीज है तो कैसा रहा है आउट्स मतलब द फर्स्ट टाइम आई वर्क विद अ वो दी आई थिंक वो बहुत बहुत सॉल्व द बिग नेम्स ऑन देयर तो क्या है थोड़ा सा इफ यू गिव अस सम गॉसिप शो गॉसिप या इट्स एंड स्टे अवे इट्स ऑलमोस्ट यू लाइक फ्रॉम मीडिया एंटरटेनमेंट लाइक नो कमेंट बट लाइक व्हाइल इट हैज द फेम एंड ग्लोरी आई थिंक वन ऑफ द थिंग्स आई हैव रियलाइज्ड आई हैव ऑलवेज बीन अ मूवी फैन राइट मार्केट में कोई भी मूवी आनी है I think me and my wife uh, enjoy watching movies a lot. Uh, first day for show is preferred, but over the years that doesn't happen anymore. But first day last show is definitely that we always keep for. And even our friends know, but now we are going to go movie theater. We will go. So being fan of the industry, that fascination was of course there. That why the industry may what is the thing that how can you be part of it? Uh, and of course technology help me kind of be part of it. But it's a high pressure situation for sure. It's not all fame and glory. uh and watching this industry close it's lots of hard work as well mm-hmm. that sometimes you feel itna mehnat kiya whether it's marketing or creating content and then it doesn't get the right appreciation yeah. 
people are just seeing are bakwas hai or like you know they'll just uh, reject it in a second when you spend so much you know blood and sweat to kind of make something happen so i think you know it's respect for the artist i would say an artist at different levels whether it's a sport boy whether it's a makeup guy or whether it's you know stunt double of somebody it's just respecting that effort that goes in the patience that you require to do those retakes and retakes to get it good right uh you know it doesn't come easy for all right many people would lose their shit over uh ke are ek baar karna hai right in a regular day you can't do that stuff again again but to perfect like these guys are putting so much in effort so sometimes as before being a part of the industry and not uh, now being part of it i think that appreciation comes ke acha ye banane mein kitna effort gaya rahega right and what where truly effort went and where effort wasn't put in so we can differentiate that as well so it's definitely like a high pressure and high uh, amount of work required to kind of get it right for sure uh, the reason i say high pressured is uh, when you are part of the movie marketing thing and one of the experience that is very dear to me and i think that has helped me a lot is when i'm working with retrius i think uh, that as a studio has been i would say like a breakthrough experience for us that the amount of effort goes in in terms of doing right uh is like so so important and granular detail like understanding that detail is also very important uh and like some of the one of the experience that i shared yesterday right it was either make it or like do a die situation right if we wouldn't have fixed the situation at the right point in time uh a like yeah i was super excited that you know i might get a chance to meet srk but he is going to fire me or you know he's going to shout at me so much that it would be my last day in the industry nobody's gonna you know pay attention to me or what not and of course like it was our first gig uh technically to kind of support at a scale to a, such a big uh, superstar uh, and the amount of users that were kind of engaging on the content it was like unreal to us as well uh but we learned on the fly uh we were able to fix the situation and from being a die situation suddenly like you know we got a life and then we realize that you know we need to be serious about what the work that we doing in uh, and that's what the respect for again like high pressure st- pressure situation and what the impact would be because it's not about that few hundred people it's you know few million people just in a click that can happen so you make sure you you know putting your best foot forward so i think that is one thing that i learned of course there are you know, good days we got to be part of the gala success party all the gap, uh, glamour glory that comes with that Uh, and I'm, you know the realization the recognition also that comes you know makes it high a panch crore mein pe ek do crore to maine bhi contribute kar liya hai right uh, kind of um, from that so yeah there, there's of course like merit in those kind of uh, moments uh, but yeah it's definitely not easy and uh, the reality of especially like indian customers overall is uh, last moment jana हम इतने साल इंडस्ट्री में हैं बट वी स्टिल गेट अप ऑल वीक प्रायर और टू वीक प्रायर के इसलिए हम तीन दिन में कुछ करना है तो हम लाइक करो अभी इतने सालों में तो सीखे हो कि दो हफ्ता लगता है और अच्छी चीज़ करने के लिए तीन दिन में कुछ नहीं होता हम लाइक होगा तेरे पास कुछ है कुछ तो निकाल दे करके सो यू नो दैट स्टिल हैपन दैट जस्ट लाइक अ लास्ट मिनट अवेकनिंग दैट हैपन टू मेनी कस्टमर्स आई थिंक दैट्स वन रिक्वेस्ट दैट एनी आर्टिस्टिक वर्क राइट टेक्नोलॉजी है इसका मतलब ये नहीं कि जे एन को बोला भाई फिल्टर बना दो एयर फिल्टर बन जाएगा कि you know we are experience banana and one jayega it takes lots of even a prompt engineer now there are courses right how to do the right prompts to better get the right outputs and that is also an art so undermining something you know doesn't help but truly understanding the effort is a very important uh but yeah that's uh that you got to be you have not feel i think the hand that come out like it was able to that and this so is like one of the riskiest business to be in out of the the best store ka sakai hai jo log hai yeah it's a uh, it's a big gamble uh, but having said that is uh, pain i also wanted to ask on keep it on your metaverse uh, train metaverse jab chalu hua tha i think it was a very dodgy of between this to get an experiment yeah to kya raha hai how's your experience been there abhi ecosystem mein jo ho raha hai what how do you see the ecosystem there is it is was it a fad is it something which probably has died down or even path to take up the rate kya of the you have been you have seen this up close at first so yeah aapko kya take hai aapko uske baare mein so i think metaverse was a highly abused word according to us 
people didn't understand what it meant uh, and they just jumped in because somebody else did mm-hmm. or like abroad make a stick here and this time you don't want to miss the board so everybody was jumping on the bandwagon from that standpoint with no foundation legs uh, we were shouting our lungs out as well when everybody was seeing a race near metaverse metaverse kya karna hai ye wo matlab metaverse hua hai jo bhi wo naam dena bhul ja matlab forget the name uh, focus on like the value mm-hmm. right and that's when you are truly understanding the power of a technology otherwise you're misusing it and it's not going to sustain uh, so of course people made quick dollars big money uh, through it but they soon lost ample amount of money into that process as well so to us it was uh, a too soon phase right the access to technology is still isn't there that kind of supports that yes it was like a ready player me moment right that sort of not a ready player me aaj aa jayega but the foundation nahi hai wo ecosystem nahi hai for it to flourish right. that access to technology is not there like today also like vr devices or good quality vr devices super expensive yeah. so if you're talking about like metaverse from that standpoint it's still not accessible it's still not that iphone moment of value enough for somebody to kind of wear it on the face and like walk around we get smaller and smaller eventually uh, but again like metaverse to us was always that hey it's a virtual space it's a game that you can now use for potential commerce opportunities that's the view point but people were like are virtual world explore karenge ye karenge wo to aap game khel hi rahe the so alag kya hai isme right if you're not providing more than what existing mediums provide uh, then it's not an opportunity that you should get into but i have to say it's again a like story here it till the time the ecosystem matlab agar koi kuch bhai ka nikus hai to wo aayenge nahi log aayenge nahi to log aayega nahi तो ये कैसे रहते हो सॉल्व राइट ये स्टडी एंड मैटर्स गाइस फॉर यू टू हैव द इमेज यू वाज या या ही इज बिल्डिंग अ मेटावर्स ई स्पोर्ट्स ऑर्गेनाइजेशन और वो ही बोल रहे हैं कि मेटावर्स मैन बनाना है चल गया तो बढ़िया था अभी तो डाउन डाउन साइड हो गया है अभी भी मैं बना भी हूं मेरे पास सारा कुछ है तो भी इकोसिस्टम ही नहीं है वहां पे तो फिर मेरे को इट इज नाउ ऑन मी टू एजुकेट पीपल एंड गेट देम देयर तो मेरे लिए ज्यादा काम हो गया Yeah, what's what's your take on that? So I think there are lots of uh, market levers that work with you and work against you as well, right? Of course, many companies have rebranded themselves. Everybody said, you know, the CMO is now a chief metaverse officer, the chief marketing officer. This new naming clatures and everything was thrown out. Uh, but again, the fundamental understanding wasn't there. So uh, it was a wave that people tried. People now have bad blood to that as well, and that is the. hesitation so i would say metaverse bolo ya koi aur verse bolo you know forget that right focus on the value that you're providing so one of the things that we did for uh, so your partners with global esports uh, federation which has like 130 federations globally uh, and is created by ex olympian leadership team uh, that organization and something for them uh, we built around istanbul games uh, that happened last year uh it was a experience where you could actually see the stream you could engage with the fellow viewers and you can play a few games as well and there was photo studio and other activities the goal was simple ke uh you were providing an alternate uh viewing arena of sort right and the object objective was very real as well it's not about there will be millions of users there will be 1000 users 2000 users that's fine but that's the set that you want to closely work with understand kya consume ho raha hai kya under nahi any other data science exam or uh, examination uh, that you want to really understand what people are liking and what people are not so and that brought us like some good insights as well where the market is and where not but uh, when we built that one key focus that we said no app downloads because of the biggest registration our uh, uh, reservation here uh, so we made this accessible on a mobile browser as well and a desktop browser because we understood that if somebody is going to access it downloading the app will be a challenge but it has to be accessible on a phone and an easy go so the experience sizes and limits were defined accordingly that no matter what kind of device you had the person could still experience to our surprise the average view time was still 22 minutes of almost 7000 users that were present in the arena or watching online or what's not they came into the experience tried it out they still spent 20 minutes and this is again not the thing you're all spawn over and fir udhar hi khade 
but they were actually moving around viewing the content or interacting with people just because it was accessible and there was like you know less less resistance in terms of how to access it uh but then again the other part was that uh like nfts and those things were again like thrown so conjunction may doesn't work maybe it has its independent space and value and you know blockchain and everything has its own space sometimes you try to merge two technologies together to so they are not the uh, right mix as well yeah. so i think that's what happened to metaverse i'm still a believer that uh it will still take next 24 months to its true potential 24 months next 24 months to its true potential uh people will keep on using it here and there people will keep on experimenting it uh and eventually it will get to the right mobility that it's understood by the end consumer and the right value as well and it's all about can it be uh, a a place where people can all right like social media today uh from your earlier to where it is right it was consumption then people realize ki how i can be a creator and earn money from that right it's the same thing with this anywhere where there is a uh economics involved right whether somebody is consuming somebody is bidding somebody is selling that can effectively happen and that's the true potential from the solution hub so kitna sides there it can both also exactly so it again becomes the axis of technology so divide the let's say these headsets on your eyes right google glass tried early on i was a user as well the 1500 dollars spent kiya was my birthday gift she gave she was betting a lot uh other years i heard about it ke padra so down the drain but i think to me that was uh like hey it could be the iphone moment right but again it was too soon it was creepy uh people like it chalu hai ke nahi hai there is no like visual uh connection to say that uh, is it legit or is it not introducing my privacy and all those things so the positioning was incorrect if it was a regular process then it could work vision vision pro ke bara mein kya hai uh I just worry about the price point, but thinking what uh, iPhone did, right? That it broke the pi- price point. Like, let's say at that point in time, I was with her, and uh, when just before iPhone, right? The way it used to, it used to work in the US that you get phones or contract, and phones are generally free, or you're getting cash back. You're actually making money by getting a new phone. Uh, at that point in time, as well, I was like, there were some phones that you still have to pay hundred dollars to kind of get the phone. Uh, iPhone was a similar thing that you had to pay two hundred dollars. It was it a free phone to still be on a contract. Uh, people was like your dude point is any other, right? But like the early adopters, once they access it, once you do something, right? That's when it kind of you truly understand the potential. You can see on the sidelines and keep on complaining and pitching, uh, but when you actually use it, uh, then that's what you know everything changes. And then you know everything changed for that. It's the same thing here. that the iteration is happening at a rapid speed and uh pehle iteration hota tha a decade then it became five years now every two years or 18 months that cycle keeps on rapidly changing and evolving i think it's going to be the same thing i think apple i'm super excited because they broke the barrier from a you know regular phone to like a smartphone i think this could be that that you know if i have enough value to the content that i'm i'm getting the right positioning right i don't mind spending It's not like हम you know तीन तीन चार चार लापा टीवी नहीं देते, yeah. so if this makes it accessible, personal, uh, social, like you know all those things combined in a much more effective way, uh, then it's a game. So I think even for them the type of content, the type of value is what they are focusing on, which again like is the right approach, and so are like some other players that already uh, were there at the hockey. So yeah, super yeah, excited to get excited, exciting times I I would say. अब थोड़ा सा हाँ आपके ऑन्ट्रप्रनोरल जर्नी की तरफ मतलब Came out with this part. So, I just want to say something that when you, I mean, what's your usual mindset when you come across, uh, you know, come across um, uh, a fork on the road? Yeah, I mean, for other part, we have this, for example, uh, this the first assignment that you people close. Yeah, in fact, when you were traveling, you were traveling, 
and things were not working out. Why do we did have a process of managing this too? Why did they buy after you were still figuring out? Okay, the same man, the same as that So what was your mindset at that point? Uh, so I think the constant uh, mindset, of course, is okay, how do you make money, right? Either you bring in the right business model in play, or uh, you have cash flows to you know play the long game. But it all boils down to money in your pocket. Uh, and that is where most of the innovation happens as well, uh, when you don't have money, right? Mm-hmm. So I think over the years, uh, I think the team that we are, uh, I always call my team like a lean meat machine, because people get surprised to the geographies, to the type of customers that we work with and the support that we provide, and the rapid scale that we're able to deliver things as well. Uh, of course, it, it wasn't uh, from the get-go like that. Uh, so uh, for us, it's not just being right place, right time, but I think I'm generally very optimistic in life where uh, I come across a problem and my first thing is like, I not the response of saying that this problem came. Like the problem came, I can't control the problem of not coming in my life, but now that it is your, how do I solve for it? What are the solutions on the table? Let's look towards that rather than cry and carry no, this problem as a right. Uh, so, Doing it from that angle has helped me, uh, you know, always survive. I would say, even I would say, COVID, right? COVID and taking media heavy when that business disappears, you like, you know, you are on extremely low cash reserves and you're figuring out that now, kabi a pandemic, hoga, kabi kisko pata nahi ki, you know, when markets will open, it's very unheard of. Uh, so to figure out what could be that next big opportunity. Uh, for us at that point in time, we constantly took a choice ke, jab tak, like I can't pay a single salary, I won't reduce the pay. Right? Everybody will still get the same pay, we are not reducing the pay. Yes, we won't get the raise because it was around the raise cycle, we just lost the raise as well. Like that I can't do, but I'll still keep things in areas. Uh, but we'll maintain the status quo, give us a few months. Right? Mm-hmm. Everyone will figure out the change landscape and we will do as well. Uh, and at that point in time, uh, we got to the phase ke, like you know we want to maintain the team at that time we were like nine members nine ten members at that point time uh, upon was compared to like revenues uh, that were that were still on the higher side so it wasn't like we had like you know, six months or eight months of cash flow it was barely like three months and that was people pay our time name was like movie it was like a scary word at that point time uh, so we kind of hustled our way through every team member kind of participated sorry explore karo and everybody was chiming in because that's a DNA that you know I have kind of cultured into my team as well and to me always is leading my example if I don't provide an example then nobody knows okay, you know, this is the potential and sometimes the simple thing that I would be working later with them and it could be just basically if you're working in office I would be like I would food and red food if I can't afford at that point in time, but I'll make my contribution whatever way. Next morning, I'll sh- still show up on regular thing. So now they are programmed to as well. Ki are, you know, sir, to by default, at 8 o'clock, at So we can't make an excuse that away, we work late and we can't come in. So this small installations of thoughts and accountability and responsibility is like super important. And I think that has, that has helped us to what we are constantly. That team will provide, you know, our chef, we have to stay six months ahead. Uh, to be in the game, otherwise we are not in the game. Uh, so, past two years I was in the US, kind of setting up a US entity and doing for the transition. Uh, that change of DNA happens when you're not closer to the team. Uh, and that was the other realization. So, there have been those ups and downs and learnings, but the goal is always that since I've landed it's been two and a half months, the goal is how do we get back to the glory that we had and then looking forward into what we want to do next or what we want to uh, break next. Uh, yeah, it's been, uh, so uh, who's, I mean, how many co-founders do you have? Uh, so right now, over the years, I had co-founders which kind of moved on. Uh, so I've been like a founder, but then I have a partner in the US. So we are two uh, private partners now. So I think it's always a tough call when you, when you, you know, you transition co-founders out. Uh, remember we were chatting with you, shows the go-over all the If you know there's a DNA esports chicken platform. He has been running his company for seven years. Yeah. He's the only man starting. 
and he he has upgraded one of his team members who has been there like from day one uh, to a role because he deserved it, as he says. So, but the IPC is just one thing. Get a get a sense here. Usually, जो आप team hire जो when when you hire people when you plan के हिसाब से काम करते हैं. How do you? I mean, I think that process must have also evolved with your learning style. Uh, but is that is there any kind of evaluation criteria you know, that applies to your product? See, sometimes I think I would say if you talk to any of my team members today, I don't know what it is. Right. Okay, so my question is never about what you've learned. Right? You have the potential to learn. And if you have the potential to learn and wear with all, then that's the primary skill set that I'm looking for. That's so essentially, as I was saying, like one is the culture for DNA is like so very important that I've got over the years. That if somebody doesn't have the wear with all to understand that, hey, first of all, you are going to start up, and it's not like a glorious startup that you should think from. It's not about glory or day one, right? Eventually, you have to be in the part of the ecosystem, and that's when you want to see the true value. But don't expect that, hey. किसी को अगर 150 करोड़ ई सॉफ्ट में एग्जिट मिला है यहाँ पे इट माइट नॉट बी द सेम और इट कैन बी द सेम राइट बट कीप योर ओपन माइंड दैट व्हाट वी आर मूविंग टुवर्ड्स एंड दीज आर अ सर्टेन माइल स्टोर्स सो इम्प्लांटिंग दैट थॉट दैट हे दीज आर द नेक्स्ट सेट ऑफ प्लान इफ दैट्स व्हाट यू वांट टू अंडरस्टैंड लर्न आई कैन हेल्प यू बट आई डोंट वॉन्ट टू गिव यू ड्रीम्स एंड होप्स राइट समटाइम्स आई हैव टू बी रियल एज वेल इट वॉट टू बी रियल एज वेल सो कल्चर फिट आई थिंक फ्रॉम दैट स्टैंड पॉइंट इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट एंड माई हायरिंग रूल इज वेरी सिंपल Right, and even from uh, the work in the US for so long, is I hire fast, I fire fast as well. And jitna bhi emotion quotient ho ya kuch bhi ho, that is me as a leader of the company. I have to keep my emotional quotient very separate. My personal connection to you has no way connection to if I have to fire you, I'll fire you. So I will never uh, take a second guess if you are not right for the business. So. Over the years, it could be a new employee. Or over the years, like that is one thing that I constantly say that hey, if you want to move on, let me know. We together figure out what way you should move on and what is the right fit. I'll give you the genuine feedback because if you're not happy, I'm not happy, and you're not an apple that I essentially go on in the organization. So how do we keep our interest alive? So that is the other thing that is very important to me. Like on my contract, it says a month. Earlier on the contract, we said. You know, I'll decide your uh, exit dates, and typical Indian contract for two months now. But there are people I've said please leave right now, right? Because a single moment here, you are spoiling everybody's interest over here, or who is aligned, who are result driven, that you're impacting their results as well. So it's no point having you even for a single minute, right? You get paid for a month or a remaining ten years, and money is you know less significant to the impact that you would do if you don't want to be here and you're being forced to work. So you're not forced to work here. So, like I, I would basically believe into somebody what everyone's saying, but I have my few checkpoints, right? If they hit those checkpoints, then they are a fit. If they are not, then they're not. How important is uh, emotional intelligence, or rather, support from the family in running a startup or running a business or whatever? Um. So. It is very important, but it is also important to understand that you're not not going to get it early on. You still have to prove whether it's your family, whether it's you know, your close friends, whether it's your team as well. You have to prove that you have the method to stand, whether you fail or whether you succeed. Once you've made up that in your mind that if you have to do it, you have to do it. No, it's right for you. Then it's right. It will be right for everyone else. But if you second out. In terms of why you're doing this, then you know you're not going to be happy. If you're not happy, then everyone else around you won't be happy. One of the things I I tell my wife as well, right? I quit my job in 2015 from Goldman Sachs, had a great offer to cut me and all the all of that. But it's been eight years now, but I'm still happy every morning that I can break the world if I want to, right? I can break an innovation, I can do whatever, which was my main goal. Sometimes yes, the There are challenges, there are problems, and there are problems at work also, right? But when I was at work, at especially my last few years, I was regretting every morning. I was not excited to get up. Like here, I'm excited to get up because I know what is it? Something new has come. Let me figure out if there is a potential to explore, right? Uh, so that's at least what has kept me uh, 
you know, grounded from that standpoint. And then eventually the, I think emotional, uh, I would say emotional support from family comes in because now you've changed your view, viewpoint. You've proven them. Mm-hmm. But you know, look what he's done, right? Without our support. So with our support, imagine what he can do, mm-hmm. right? So that's the thing that, you know, I keep to myself that every time I think of something new, or I tell her, I have a new idea, I have a rejection. But if even if I'm able to convince one person who was extremely negative, even to like a 40% or 50% positive, uh, you know, psyche to it, that's my success. And then I just have to work towards, you know, you know getting more people on board or getting the right people on board who are aligned uh, to what the vision is. But in general, another thing for the people that are you, they usually get a little. I mean, especially with the first time for others of that, they usually get a, get very bogged down uh, and matlab, follow through me that way. That's because somebody else has said, no. yeah. what their it is. So what is, what is, what is your, is it, is it just a mental strength thing? Or is it general as a process that everybody has to, you have to push through? So, uh, I think it's a general process that you learn by experience, right? Uh, eventually, you learn that, you know, failure is part of it. Who acceptance is one time, it will They listen to the coaches of the world, they attend all these conferences, they say, hey, that's right, that's right, but they don't take truly the learning. They are only hearing the bits that are important from that standpoint. But when they actually face it, they realize, hey, shit, no, that guy was you know, seeing the truth or my experience. And oh, I don't know, it's it's a human mentality, right? That when it happens with me, then it's not my story. Uh, when it happens with me, then oh, there's a community of people who kind of connect, right? And then there are you know, groups in the past that have come like fuck up nights, right? It was all about talking about failures. Right, and that was like a phenomenal place to, it's an open mic for failures. When that started to happen, there was uh, like acceptance to that. Like even let's say one of the things that fundamentally changed and it was timely for me when I came in 2015, startup was you know, it was still like everybody didn't know, knew about it. But I think it was timely a year or two later that startup India movement and all these movements happened. Where suddenly people said, Acha, oh, beta startup kar rahe ho. Oh, very good, very good. Acha, ah, Modi ji support kar rahe. Or, you know, there is like public knowledge about it. Uh, like businesses ex- existed. Like your neighbor guy or general stores, all these are businesses. Whether you call it a startup or not, doesn't really matter. Right? Whether this should start up or whether it's a physical startup, doesn't really matter. But coining these terms and getting like a wide uh, acceptance in the market adds to that. So I think uh, founders need to be that, you know, they they again learn by experience, but sometimes if people are saying, uh, you're and listen with an open mind and, you know, you're constantly learning. If you're not constantly learning, uh, then you're not growing. And then, you know, you'll get through your iteration of experiences or failures. You're going to get to, right? Rather than like, learn from people's failures and make sure you don't. Uh, yeah. I think, why did you leave Goldman Sachs and start? What was the story then? Uh, so I think before truly starting, I've started a few things on part time uh, and passion projects. Passion projects, right? Or side hustle, right? Mm-hmm. Uh abhi side hustle coaches out there. Mm-hmm. But tabi tha basically kya re, no, kush to karenge. Uh, so I've done like online food ordering back in like 2008 uh, when it was, didn't exist and people like are no, I have a phone in phone. I have a phone in the I have a phone in the phone. I have a phone in So, having that kind of resistance at that time, I wasn't able to sustain for that long. It just was like a four months, six months effort. And then, me giving up too early as well. Let alone, like 18 months later, it became like a big thing. Right? So, my learning was there that I have a full confidence and be ready for a two year cycle. Rather than saying that that is instant glory. Either or chala hai, either bhi chale ra, and you know it will kind of be the next big thing. It doesn't happen. There is again like timely support of technology, access to smartphones were very important for this to succeed, uh, which happened like 18 months later to when I kind of started. So, yeah, uh, side me hustles bought ki to kind of understand the challenges and all. Uh, and then just before quitting, I had taken like a four month sabbatical where I did like a kids business as well. Mm-hmm. That was a full time effort. Me and my wife started that. It was a subscription for baby products uh, and uh, 
like as a new parent that you were just a new parent as well so it was like if i connect to a problem and if i talk to enough parents and they said yes then it's a viable thing so we went down we asked our way to so exhibitions and also kia uh and uh, we realized that full time effort pays right yes we struggle right now but how do we you know it's all about how do we break out from where we are are we comfortable or you know life is all about like recreation or constant learning and am i learning enough so i think that realization brought in can i it's time for me to kind of you know leave the part time hustles and everything and how i can go it full time uh though i had to uh say that are no chhe mahine mein ho jayega to my family and the saal mein ho jayega but i knew and then you know it will it will have its own cycle i could receive an instant glory i might thought uh six months i received the five things so we wake my strong up uh but then back in pan out really was all the purpose that i had to do so i think more it was uh that i wanted to do something and i was delivering at my professional life and i thought i can if i'm doing for others i can do it for myself as well i just have to have that full conviction to kind of go through that entire journey rather than like you know starting and stopping so you people for something i'm sure you are part of uh so we have had several rounds of funding so our first round of funding we got a paid back an investors and then we go to a us entity uh there we are funded uh basically two and a half years back we got funded by techstars uh, and then two angel investors so we just have that uh capital two and a half years back that we raised uh but yeah after that we been uh, like sort of growing and almost like profitable and uh, going from there on without a tension that's a power uh, how was your experience uh, so uh, bootstrap versus uh, you know raising funds what's how how would you how do you uh, categorize that what's the difference between the two or you uh, so one of the things i have learned the hard way is uh, if you're raising anything that 20 25 lakhs banks will only uh right uh first go up boost up or a debt or a house or you got to figure out any more terms but it's your own hustle right and you have full control market support access of it's more to uh now than what it was earlier earlier on so you just have to have the right approach and strategy and have enough conversations to know understand but uh if you're only you know thinking about that then that's not the money worth with the, all the headache and things that come in at a later point in time and it's your conviction as well that if you are able to risk that kind of uh money on your own then it is a viable thing but again like people have different thoughts and objectives from what backgrounds and everything that they come in uh but yeah if my early days i should have bootstrap then like raising small funds uh and uh, i think over the years uh always think revenue first right ke bhale tum aaj paisa na kamao but you should have to yeah if your definition clear hai and if you have a paying customer then i feel that is a much viable business of course there are data games there are user games you know that are there but we quickly realize even like from yesterday's conversation or honestly general the market is all about revenues investors are not asking it suddenly they're like revenue hai ke nahi hai bhale kaun hoga chalega par have you figured out the revenue can you steal the revenues or not people are not asking how many installs can you have like they know you can pay and then you can get like influencers tapped in and you can get some metrics but are those metrics truly the metric that you should chase defining that uh, metric early on is very important and does this business have legs in terms of revenue whether it's a subscription business uh whether it's like a service business whether it's enterprise customer that you are doing and there are different models right one of the things that worked for us uh, even when the initial funding the pivot didn't support right that we didn't have money to pivot so we had to do revenue based pivot where we essentially were building with customers we were thinking of solution that we were out to customer and saying are you going to pay for it right and this is what's going to help uh and that helped us a lot in early because then oh canvas free hai that you can move in any direction you today you starting with the x business model tomorrow to be y tomorrow to be z uh but then that frugality is there because the market will demand at certain point or the other tum aaj jo soch se ho kal thoda zaruri nahi uh but you got to start thinking money first whether it's it shouldn't be technically investor money investor money will follow but if you figure out the revenue or if you figure out the right metrics uh then it, everything is going to make sense uh so i think that was uh, what i've learned over the years 
uh, and then you know giving exit to investors is not easy. It's like a bad breakup, right? Uh, that can you know do, uh, and it, it's again like gruesome at the same point in time. Though it, like you know life is a bitch at that point in time, but then was that entire thing you learn a lot as well, right? So, uh, but yeah, would I have avoided that thing if I would have bought a few people? Yes. Uh, so it all boils down to keeping you. You like this chapter taking easy out, huh? Yeah, let's try to put it left there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that is such a popular term, but such an abuse thing. Uh, but yeah, you need to have jugar for the right thing. It's not about ki kar lenge, but it's about kyu karenge and jugar idhar use karna hai ki nahi use karna. Like a simple thing that uh, uh, in yesterday's conversation as well, right? Like finance uh, sector, you can't do jugar. There's regulation, and if you work within the frame. Then there is opportunity as well. There you can't just say I, I can wing it. Yeah. Uh, so again, it depends upon the industry where you come in and how you want to approach it. Uh, but yeah, Jugar doesn't like work every day or everywhere. You just got places right as well. Uh, one last question. Uh, so there are so many founders who um, are trying to build the ARPR space. Um, a lot of these people. Go a little bit deeper into the tech, but not a lot of people understand how important it is to start selling. Also, as a look at look at health business also, because both sell is the other type of after go R and D we go sell. Can we make the world the most sharp with that? The best one about that, take it also with that. Yeah. So how important it is, especially when you are in an ecosystem, when you are building in a. In an industry which is very tech heavy, or rather, rather that's the perception. How important it is to be business first, or rather, as a founder, look at it as a business and not just as a cool tech that you're with. Uh, so I think uh, such technology, of course, is much more important to wear it. And so anybody who's looking to get into has to focus on a niche and has to focus where problem exists. And not creating a problem and then finding a solution, right? So differentiating between that is very important. Here we are a lot more. It happens that problem is often defined as solution. First, it happens because it is cool. But it is cool because it is solving a problem, or it is just cool because it is a new tech. Right? So differentiating between that, uh, even from a product standpoint, no matter what kind of technology, right? If you can reduce your idea to say, "Okay, hey, in first four weeks, I can get to an MVP that somebody can use and give me feedback," then that is the right strategy. Ideally, people say like two weeks sprint is the best, but I would say you can take up to four weeks, and again, it doesn't have to be finished as long as it has the value. Once you have gotten to the value point, then building everything, building IP, patents, and all that can easily be done. But people get bogged down so much about that there is no IP in it. No IP business. Yeah, if your business is growing fast, nobody technically cares about IP, and IP will be derived because any of the technology is shipping out there is by IP cause it lie or what is unique or how do we position this uniquely that there is IP value to it. Mm-hmm. So yes, understanding the end customer problem and the challenge, and then does this solution fit that uh, right application is where they are like super important. So like the metaverse is that classic example, right? Again, like AR, VR, it's all. This may be digital connection, and we did like physical as well, which is like physical, virtual, digital, and how do you make a seamless connection? Uh, doesn't always work, right? You have to truly understand that are you solving for technology or are you solving for a problem? So once you kind of get to that, uh, you know, the sky is the limit. So here is the same thing that uh, AR, VR is no different than any other like AIs or Gen AIs or any other new technologies out there. Uh, that you really have to first see a problem, and with the lens of AR and non-AR as well. If there is a non-AR solution, then why non-AR will not? Right or not non-immersive will not? Forcefully AR ka solution chip ka ho. So yeah. So is there uh, one last bit uh, if you if you have to give any advice to me or anybody founders out there who are starting out for the first time? What are the top two three things that these people should keep in mind? Uh, so, to summarize, I would say one is uh, if you can fund yourself, fund till you can, right? Uh, 
Second is if you can find revenues early on, then focus on revenues and find a paying customer uh, that will make your life much easier. Uh, though the journey is difficult, you could have you would have to have hundred conversations before you find that one person saying yes. Mm-hmm. And hey, take my money. But once you find that one, there are higher chances of the remaining ninety nine yeah, yeah. kind of following the suit as well because you truly understand understood on how to position the value that your platform or your product will provide for somebody to actually give you money today. Mm. And in multiple locations, if you're a digital product, people are not seeing the product. They are imagining it. So the storytelling, the getting somebody to visualize your vision is like so much important. Though presentation and everything can help, but it's still your storytelling. Uh, and that mm-hmm. approach is like so very important. Uh, third, I think it's like a part of my DNA that uh, learn to fail and learn to fail fast. It is okay, right? But try it, break it down into two weeks sprints so you know what will work or not sooner rather than you building it for six months and then you uh, getting a failure. So that's more failure on your process. So there are two types of failure. Right? One is failure of the process itself and then failure of the product. Failure of the process you can do faster rather than failure of a product. So get to that iteration sooner and get to those no's faster to kind of get to the right product fit uh, sooner as well. That's true. And what's the what's next for France for you as well? I think uh, we failed a lot in terms of building a product. Uh, so I think uh, our focus is how do we move from I would say more like service or agency that business to more like a micro product that could be like a micro product or uh, present like a big option for us. We have few areas where we've understood our strengths. Uh, sometimes we've gone against it. So I think goal is to understand our limitations or understand our potential of the network that we are in as well. And you do something that encapsulates uh, that. Uh, and that he he has story. business where margins is it that is it dependent on whether you're a premium service or well, what's the use of margins? See, it's it can range from down to like seven and a half percent to like forty percent as well, right? So if you're on the advertising side and you're providing ad programmatic advertising solutions, then it's seven five percent to what like, are you doing? Huh? Uh, but if you want other service led creative services. It can be as low as 15% to as healthy as like 40% as well. But I think over the years, running like an agency kind of a portal, at least on the agency side of a business, uh, it still trends around like 20%, 15 to 20% in that range uh, from a top line goal, the impact perspective. Yeah. But the agencies, is it for acquisition or the format? Or we go to the Ghana, for example, PH to acquire, grow up, like work, acquire. Are there any other modes you fill up in the FCL business to play to survive? See, again, uh, if you ask me, right, I didn't want to be a life service, right? But situational, right, uh, in that uh, never got to the right product uh, or the right approach because constant uh, struggle, ta revenue pe focus kare ya product pe focus kare. Then many times market scenarios change or like even early this year market scenarios change, money kind of you know, bled out of the market, investors could not really touch anything, neither were customers because everybody's uh, message became reserve cash as much as you can. So then spend there was a decrease over yeah. So that has like its cycles. Uh, so that changes our priority and uh, that thing as well. But I think what we are doing consciously is to separate these units out and have its own independent PNL, right? So if we have to discard like a product that didn't truly really work, then we know what's two PNL is back and then thinking like any other uh, business as well. It's a transition that we've tried a few times, but I think we've gotten smarter every time. Uh, we've got to a certain stage, but then, you know, had have given up or then it stays as a close knit product. But I think this time our strategy is getting the right resources who've done this again and again into the fold. Uh, rather than being stingy in terms of spending for let's say simple marketing dollars as well. And we are preaching the world, we sometimes don't do it. So I think going this time is how do we use our skill sets to our right, what it is well. And uh, that's the learning that we want to grow in the next 18 months. Yeah, I think, I think um, 
you need to spend if you want the right resources. Yeah. You can't be, you can't, uh, like, chip these only videos. Yeah. And rather than having like four bad resources, it's important to have one good resource, right? Who shares your DNA, who shares your vision as well, that you don't have to implant your vision constantly, yeah. right? Uh, cheaper resources, yes, they are good for like maintaining tasks, uh, but they are also limited. They have limited number of experience under the pair. It's the mindset, the background, the people, the circle that they come from, that sometimes they value this thing or sometimes they won't. Uh, so it, it's important to have you know A players early on around you because then that's the only way to multiply. Otherwise, then if you are like a, you also become a showstopper if you are the one who is setting priorities properly. Uh, you need to have like the right you know, wazirs and you are right uh, set of team members to kind of help drive the vision. Yeah. Okay. With that, I think you can draw this podcast to a close. Thanks a lot, Sam, for taking time out. It's been an amazing discussion. I think we are here where industry is developing and I also want to understand how you operate as an entrepreneur. All the very best to you for Superfast Studios and hope to see some amazing work from you and hopefully be a beta tester for your product as well. I really appreciate Thank you for having me. I think it's been a pleasure as well. Uh, it's always great to you know share our story and see you know, helps out very more folks not to go through that same experience challenges that we have both. So always happy to pay forward and uh, thank you for uh, helping us share the story with the world. Thank you, thanks, Ross, and thanks. All right.